Hey everyone, I hope you're well. This is the story about what if Naruto was Fairy Queen's apprentice. Before we start, please subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. I have created a playlist of this what if and other what ifs, make sure to check them as well. So without any further ado, let's start the what if. Hey old man. What mission do you have for me? Naruto shouted as he walked through the window into the office of the leader of his village. He heard the older man sigh in annoyance, not at Naruto but the fact Naruto was coming in through the window, before he turned to Naruto with a smile. The leader of the village was an elderly man in his late 60s or early 70s with a small white beard on his chin. The old man was about the same height as Naruto, only a little taller, and he had a wrinkled tan face. Hanging from his lips were a wipe and he wore white robes with a white triangle hat with a red front that had the kanji for fire on it. The old man was the most powerful person in the village, the Hokage, none other than the third Hokage who was named Hiruzen Sarutobi. Naruto had gone three weeks without any missions whatsoever, just using his time to learn from Urza how to transform into some other armors. Nothing like some of her major powers, but the things that would come in handy against the ninja that specialized in using elemental ninjutsu in a fight. He already had his flame empress armor restored, and he was ready for a mission. Urza was still having him completely master the basics of swinging a sword before she would teach him anything more than the demon blade Crimson Sakura. She wouldn't even teach him about the more dangerous armors that were harder to use until his gained more magic control. Ah. Uh. Sorry, but Team 7 is not being assigned a mission for another week. Hiruzen said, before he looked at Naruto and started to remember something. Naruto had been again in before, where he needed his sensei with him on missions. Naruto was no longer a genin though that needed to always been in the sight of his teacher, because now he had proven he was more than capable of being trusted to go on missions alone, or with a small group of chunin with him. He wouldn't have promoted Naruto if he hadn't been 100% sure that the young teen was ready for it. His parents had been ready for more near the same age, so he would trust Naruto with the same chances he gave his parents. Hiruzen puffed on his pipe, before he exalted some smoke. Aw oh man, that sucks. I wanted to go on a mission, I need some money. I'm almost out as it stands. Naruto said in annoyance as he started to head towards the window so that he could leave. He was disappointed that he wouldn't get a mission, but at least he could go back to training, and who knows, maybe he would be able to go hunting or something if he needed some food. There was a river nearby the village he could use for some fishing. Actually Naruto, if you want I can send you on a mission with teammate. They should be here momentarily. It is just a regular C-rank mission though, but I want you to get some experience going on missions with different people. Hiruzen explained his reasoning to Naruto. Naruto leaned back and sat down on the edge of the window and leaned up against it. He was grinning again now that he was sure he was going to get to go on a good mission instead of those chores that people called missions these days. Cool, what's the mission? Naruto asked curiously. Hiruzen looked at Naruto again by spinning in his chair and he raised an eyebrow for a moment when he saw that Naruto wasn't wearing the chunin vest that had been given to him. He had expected the boy to never want to take it off, but instead he saw Naruto wearing the same armor-slash-skirt combo that he had been wearing during the chunin exams. Of course, he wouldn't judge the boy for his new tastes in clothing, not when he saw for himself just how powerful and useful those strange armors and weapons could be. The fact they seemed to be a part of the boys, strange new bloodline meant that he shouldn't judge the boy for dressing this way. Suppressing a, a group of wild animals that have been straying to close to a nearby city. Nothing very dangerous. Hiruzen said as he grabbed his stamp and started to finish what little was left of the small amount of paperwork he usually had to do. The stack was only about 10 pages tall, and once he got that done he would be free for the day to do some reading or some of his other hobbies. Honestly, his job wasn't nearly as super stressful as people thought it was. The only time the paperwork got that bad was when you let it build up for a few days. Getting treaties from other countries were rare, and the only regular things he had to do was assign missions and read and sign mission reports, as well as give Ninja a part of their earnings for each mission. He didn't have to do paperwork for most other stuff, 
since the head of the hospital took care of all medical reports and he only had to stamp them. The ANBA took care of their own reports, and they did NO paperwork for that, since it could lead to their ANBA's identities being leaked and the secret missions they do getting exposed. The clan heads dealt with their clan matters, and their budgets were taken care of by having parts of their own ninja's paychecks being added to clan funds, a small portion, but when clans did more missions they got more money. Easy money, and I was hoping for a B rank. Naruto said with a pout, while Urza appeared next to him, having came out of his body with a yawn. She seemed to have been asleep while inside of him for a while, not being really tired, but being bored watching him sleep she decided to sleep herself. B rank? In my time missions were assigned by rank as well, but how is missions these days classified? Urza asked Naruto, who blinked when he realized that he, for the life of him, did not know how missions were classified by ranks. Hey old man, how do you rank missions? Naruto asked, knowing he couldn't personally talk to Urza when other people weren't around. Good question my boy, and to answer it I should start from the bottom. Missions are assigned ranks given not only the difficulty, but the skill level required for it and the amount of money being paid. Hiruzen said as he took out a blank piece of paper and started to use his pen to write on the paper. Naruto could see him making lines connecting some words to others, before the older man held the paper over to Naruto. D rank, assigned to fresh genin from the academy. Usually pose almost zero threat to the ninja, and pay between 5,000 and 50,000 ryo. C rank, assigned to more experienced genin or a chunin. Usually have the chance of possible injury to the ninja undergoing mission, and pay between 30,000 and 100,000 ryo. B rank, assigned to experienced chunin. Higher chance of combat with other ninja, and usually pay between 150,000 and 200,000 ryo. A rank, assigned to jonin, and concern village or state level affairs or higher chances of fighting higher level or many ninja, or suppressing ninja forces. Also given for, guarding VIPs. Pays between 150,000 and 1 million ryo. S rank, assigned to experienced jonin, and concern state level confidential matters. Assassinating high level ninja, VIPs, and transporting highly important and classified documents. The reward is usually over a 1 million ryo. Hey old man, when do you think I can go on a B or A rank mission? Naruto asked as he looked at it. B ranks didn't seem that much harder than C ranks did to him, since he had already been on an A rank mission before with Kakashi and his team, he didn't seem to think much of it. Hiruzen looked at Naruto with a smile, before he seemed to try and figure something out. Experience my boy, that is what you need. It will be a while before I send you on an A rank alone, but if I think there is a B rank you can handle, tell you what, I'll send it your way. Hiruzen told Naruto with a small smile on his face. Naruto pumped his fist in the air with a grin on his face, while Urza seemed to be considering the ranking of the missions for a bit. As she understood it, ninja were ranked by Genin, Chunin, and Jonin instead of just mage and S-class mage like in her time. Ha! Huh. I will take your hat in no time old man. Naruto declared with a grin on his face as he pointed at the Hokage nearby. The older man smiled at Naruto, before he used his fist to thump his own chest. I have a few more years left in this old body Naruto, but one day I hope you can take this hat from me. Never before have I seen a young man's whose will of fire burns as brightly as yours does. Hiruzen complimented Naruto, who scratched the back of his head. Naruto snapped his fingers, before he held his hand out and took the scroll from his father out of his pocket dimension and opened it up so that he could see what was written inside of it. Naruto read the title of the technique that was being given to him, and instead of a letter from his father like he had gotten from his mother, he simply got a few words. The Rasengan. Hey old man, what is the Rasengan? Naruto asked after a moment, that word bringing forth a kind of familiarity to him when he thought about it. Hiruzen wasn't shocked about the question, not when he saw what scroll that Naruto was holding in his hands. In fact, he had been wondering when Naruto would ask the old man about the technique, after Kakashi had given Naruto the scroll Hiruzen had been swiftly informed about it, and that the time was coming for the day Naruto would be allowed to learn about his parents. It was an attack that was created by the fourth Hokage, 
who later taught it to both his student Kakashi Hadake and Jiraiya of the Sanin and I myself had learned the first two steps of the technique from Jiraiya after the passing of the fourth. It took the fourth three years to make you know. Hiruzen said, seeing Naruto's eyes light up as he looked at the technique in his hands with a grin on his face. Naruto had in his hands a technique that had been made and used by Akage, and not only that, but the fourth Hokage that Naruto idolized more than any other Kage. Cool. Naruto muttered as he put the scroll back up. He would get to learning it later, but right now he had a mission that he was going to get ready for. Say Naruto my boy, I won't judge you, but why are you wearing that armor when you aren't fighting? Hiruzen asked after a moment, and Naruto scratched his hand. I like the way these clothes feel, and they weigh a good amount, so it is like training. If I switch to a lighter armor, or no armor, then I get a big boost in speed. No point in hiding the fact I cross-dress, not when the Chunin exams pretty much had the entire village find out. Naruto deadpanned. Really, was it so hard to believe that he liked wearing the clothes just because they felt nicer? When Naruto wore Urza's armor, it was like he was wearing a piece of one of the few people whose trust and respect he didn't have to try super hard to earn. Somebody that believed he had great potential from the very beginning, and was willing to help him out. The fact the clothes shrank down to fit his size, and the undershirt and gloves that were under the armored top were really soft were another good part of the reason. I see, well I have seen much more strange hobbies form. I am surprised though, I would have thought that you would have had the armor modified. Kanoha had several armor smiths around. Hiruzen tried to reason with Naruto, who rolled his eyes. These armors are very special, and nobody in the village will know how to work with them. They will grow to fit my size, because of the metal in them, any other metal will just break away, and if the armor breaks and the changes to the armor won't be repaired. I will have spent money for no reason, when the armor can't even be modified, not that it matters. I don't want to modify it anyway, you know. Naruto said with serious look. The metal that these armors were made out of were infused with magic when they were being formed, and the spells that were cast on them couldn't be replicated correctly without magic. Not to mention, as Naruto grew up the armor would change to fit his new sizes. Any changes made to the armor would not grow with him, making the armor weaker, and protect him even less. Not only that, but the new parts wouldn't have the special abilities of the rest of the armor, also making it weaker. It wasn't even possible to modify the armor, since they had been made for the point so that they couldn't be tampered with. They were self-repairing, so they didn't need to be worked on after that fact. I see, so it isn't a matter of will or won't, it just can't be changed. I guess that makes that armor worth a lot more than it seems to be. If that is the case, then I think you look very refined in that armor lad. Hiruzen said as he finished his paperwork and put it in the finished pile. Standing up, the older man reached into his desk and pulled out a bottle with a long and thin neck, and a fat bottom to it. He pulled the cork out of it, before he grabbed two small cups and poured one for himself, and one for Naruto. He handed the one for Naruto to him, and Naruto drank it in one go at the same time as Hiruzen. Drinking is bad for you Naruto, and if you do any more than that I will be annoyed. Keep your drinking to a moderate level. Urza lectured her student, who looked slightly sheepish. Ah. My teachers shared a drink with me when I became a chunin, and another when I became a jonin. The second Hokage had told me if I ever became Hokage that he expected me to find somebody that I would look to as the next generation of Hokage. I shared a drink with the fourth Hokage when he became a chunin and jonin, and another when he became Hokage. This is from that very same bottle that was first shared with me, well-aged sake from demon country, good stuff. The third Hokage told Naruto a small story, with a small twinkle in his eye when he looked at the cup in Naruto's hand. Naruto didn't get the message at first, but when he did a small smile formed. He was saying that he was looking forward to the day Naruto became Hokage, or at least Jonin. Thanks old man. Naruto said as he gave the cup back to the Hokage, who put it back into his desk and pulled out a book before he started to read it while Naruto summoned a sword into his hand and started to flip it around in the air and catch it over and over by the handle. Waiting for a team to gather to the office was more boring than he thought it was going to be, since he was always with his team when they were assigned a mission, 
he didn't realize how much time it was going to take. So lad, how many armors do you have now, have you learned any more? Hiruzen asked as he turned a page in his book. I am still working on mastering the Flame Empress armor right now. I learned how to summon another few, but I want to really master all of the armors. Naruto said, while Urza behind him looked at him with a growing cat-like grin on her face. There was always one armor that she had always wanted to see somebody wear, but nobody would ever agree to wear it after they heard the name of the armor. Not even Urza herself had worn the armor in a fight before, or course, it wasn't armor made for fighting. Not even Lucy would agree to wear the armor. I see, that armor was powerful. From what I saw, it gave you a very high resistance to fire. Hiruzen mused, having figured out the trick the armor did after seeing it being used by Naruto. Naruto nodded quickly with a grin on his face. Almost complete immunity to weaker fires. I also have armor that makes me pretty much immune to lightning, and another that does the same with water. Naruto said excitedly, and Hiruzen laughed lightly. He liked the fact that Naruto was so willing to share this kind of information with him like this. It did his heart well that Naruto trusted him so much, and that somebody like Naruto could exist despite how he lived. Naruto leaned back against the window again, and he closed his eyes as he waited for Team 8 to come to the office so that he could join them on their next mission. What was taking them so long? Naruto stood at the front gates. Naruto stood at the front gates and at the moment he was looking nervously to his left. He had just been officially been assigned on the mission with teammate, and right now he was waiting for the genin on the team to show up. He was with their own teacher at the moment, Karina Yuhi, who was staring at him with completely unblinking eyes. She had wavy brown hair that went down her back, and was in her late twenties with an hourglass figure that was concealed by a dress made of bandages and a fishnet undershirt. One of her arms had a long red sleeve on it, and she wore her headband on her forehead like a normal ninja would. She just stared at him. It was creeping him out, a lot. Her red eyes had no pupils, but instead strangely concentrated rings in the iris. He wasn't looking at her at the moment, but he could feel her stare piercing the back of his head. Thank you Naruto. She finally said the first words that she ever spoke to him since they met up at the front gates. Naruto looked at her in shock for the unexpected thank you, and she had a small, graceful, smile on her face. You beat Niji for Hinata, and that means a lot to me. So thank you for looking after her honor when I could not. Kurinai thanked him again, and he rubbed the back of his head. No problem Kurinai-sensei, anything for one of my friends. Niji was being such a jerk that I felt that he needed a good-ass kicking. Naruto explained with a loud chuckle. Kurinai didn't laugh, but her smile did grow a little bigger at his casual dismissal of a thanks for protecting somebody. Naruto was a good boy if he didn't expect to be thanked for helping people out, something that was great in her opinion. He helped people without expecting to be thanked in return for his efforts. That being said, why are you wearing a skirt? Kurinai asked with a raised eyebrow, while Naruto groaned. He had a feeling that a lot of people were going to bother asking him about this. He wasn't going to bother explaining his reasons every time though, so giving her a deadpan look, he decided to explain in the most simply and easy to understand without a lot of words way he could think of. I like wearing it, I'm a crossdresser now. He deadpanned, just as the sound of feet started to be heard heading their way. He and Kurinai turned around to see the rest of Team 8 walking towards them with their bags strapped to their backs. Naruto didn't have to carry his stuff manually, because the only stuff he ever brought on missions were weapons and other such things, and now he could carry them inside of his pocket dimension without any trouble involved. The first person he noticed was none other than Shino, the opponent he had defeated by the use of summoning Toad. The second person was Hinata Hyuga, a girl that was actually shorter than him with short, dark blue, hair with straight bangs, and two sides that hung down lower. He eyes were a lilac color, and she had no visible pupils inside of them. She wore a baggy coat that didn't show much of her growing body, and she wore regular blue shinobi pants that cut off at her shins. She seemed to have a blush on her face when she arrived though for some reason. She couldn't seem to look right at Naruto, but he raised his hand and waved to her anyway. 
The next person was Kiba Inuzuka, a boy taller than Naruto with tan skin and two vertical thong marks on his cheeks. His entire iris was shaped like a slit, pupil included, and the boy wore a gray hoodie with a brown fur lining on it to cover his head. On top of his hoodie was a small white dog with brownish low hanging ears and named Akamaru, Kiba's fighting partner and best friend. Yo, Naruto. Saw your fight with Niji, you totally creamed the guy. Kiba said as Akamaru barked as his own way of agreeing with Kiba. The dog-loving boy was grinning as he gave Naruto a firm pat on the armored back, before he winced when he realized he had just slapped metal. Naruto grinned and held his fist out to the boy, who bumped his fist to Naruto's armored one. I know right, totally easy too. The guy didn't even know what hit him. They give the title of genius to everyone these days you know. Naruto bragged with an easygoing grin on his face. Kiba circled an arm around Naruto's shoulders before he leaned in close. Hey, you know, I made a killing betting on you. When we get back to Konoha, I am going to treat you to a bowl of ramen. I bet you would win the entire thing, an easy 980,000 Rio in my pocket. I totally owe you one. Kiba said with a grin on his face. He made sure to speak in a whisper, since he didn't want to make the fact he had bet on Naruto to win very well known. He had been lucky he had decided to bet on Naruto defeating Niji, and then when Naruto had won that fight he had bet again on Naruto winning the entire thing. Surprisingly, more people bet on Naruto beating Niji than one would think. More of them being Jonin from the leaf that had bet on him. Make it an even dozen, and I won't tell anyone else how much you got. Naruto conspired with Kiba, who thought about it for a moment, before nodding and shaking hands with Naruto. They both separate from each other, while Naruto waved hey to Shino with a grin on his face. Naruto, I see you are doing well, why, because despite your injuries from your fight you are fit for a mission. Shino greeted in his own unique way of saying hi. Naruto started to sweat, not really understanding what Shino was saying because of the unique way he spoke. It was hard to tell if he was mad at Naruto, or if he was happy to see him again. His tone was void of any real emotion, and it made telling what he was implying harder for anyone involved. Okay, enough fun. This is how this mission is going to go, Hytome Town is a 17-hour travel by running, so we are going to run into the night and set up camp, before waking up early in the morning and getting there by noon. The chain of command is me, then Naruto, and then Shino. Kurinai informed them sternly. Hinata, who had been about to try and say hi to Naruto pouted to herself and played with her fingers at being interrupted before she cool thanked Naruto for what he did with Niji, who had been a lot nicer to her since he had been beaten by Naruto. What? Why does Naruto have more command than me? Kiba shouted in surprise, not understanding why Naruto was being placed in a higher position of command. Oh. I forgot to tell you guys, I made Chunin. They really liked how I fought over and over and didn't stop winning you know. Naruto said with an awkward rub of his head. He had known he had been forgetting to tell them something, and the news seemed to only actually be news to Kiba, who looked at Naruto in shock. Kiba, please pay attention. This had been gone over at Lord Hokage's office not even 30 minutes ago. Kurina explained to him with her annoyance clear in her voice. She had expected Kiba to pay more attention than this, though she had to admit that she had seen how it took Kiba a while to figure out that the good-looking redhead sitting on the window had been Naruto and not some tomboyish girl. The look on Kiba's face when he had seen that the person was Naruto had been completely priceless, as well as soundless. This was going to be a fun mission. So this is Hytome Town, huh? I expected it to be bigger. Naruto said as he walked with Team 8 towards a fast approaching town. They had woke up a few hours ago from camping the night before, and now they were close to the town itself, close enough so that they could see a small farming town with only maybe a couple dozen different wooden buildings. Even from their spots at the edges of the forest, they could roam in cattle and sheep in the fields. Team 8 and Naruto started to run towards the town as a reasonable speed, running towards the town with Kurinai in the lead, followed by Naruto and then Hinata and Kiba, with Shino being the slowest and trailing behind them. Not all towns can be big. 
Kurinai told Naruto as she looked back at him. The ground managed to get closer to the town in no time, and when they got on the road going through the middle of the small town they started to walk at a normal pace instead of running like their lives depended on it. When they were walking, they noticed that a lot of the people were carrying crude weapons and other such items on their bodies. Kurinai turned to Naruto, before she pointed over towards the crops. Okay, Naruto, while I go and check out the client I want you to investigate and see if you can identify the animal that has been on a rampage. Teammate, you go ask around town to see if anyone else has seen anything recently. Kurinai ordered, and following her orders they all jumped into action. Naruto separated from the group and started to run towards the field. Naruto passed by civilians on the way towards the field, but with his speed being above that of a normal human he was able to cross the distance pretty easily. Naruto didn't have any trouble getting to the field, and people didn't pay much attention to the cross-dressing boy running past them at a speed that sent dirt into the air behind him as he rushed to the other end of the field. Naruto wasn't even slightly winded from all the running he had done that day, even as he got to the other side of the field in a few minutes. It was a large field. I rushed all this way out here, and I don't even know what to look for. Naruto realized with a sweat drop when he looked around the wheat field. He had no idea what signs he should be looking for, and frankly, he was concerned that even if he saw something that he wouldn't think of it as a clue. Naruto scratched the back of his head, wondering if Urza would be able to offer some insight on this, too bad he didn't know how to call her out of his body by his own will. So far she only came out when she wanted to come out. She came out when she wanted to, and not when he did. He just wished that she didn't come out when he was in the bath. It was awkward enough she watches him sleep, awkward but handy for sneak attack, but awkward all the same. Though, she might just be letting him try and solve this one on his own. Naruto looked towards one of the field workers, before he started to run over to the middle-aged man. The man had brown hair and eyes, the normal color for the land of fire, and rather fair skin. The man was burly, being that he was larger than six feet tall and a good few feet wide. He had on a wife beater for a top, and pants rolled up into shorts for bottoms. The man saw Naruto coming over to him, before he smiled and waved at Naruto the second he saw the headband that was tightly wrapped on his forehead. What can I do for you son? The man asked, completely ignoring the skirt Naruto wore. He could see the fire of a manly youth in Naruto's eyes, and to a farmer like him he didn't understand or try and understand the ways of a ninja. He learned to accept the weird things he saw a ninja do with a gain of salt. Hey, do you know what animal has been attacking the fields? Naruto asked bluntly, and the man took a second to think about it, he took a second to long when Naruto grabbed the man by the front of the shirt and pulled him into a headbutt. The man went out like a light and fell to the ground with a thump, his eyes rolled up into the back of his head as a bruise formed on his forehead. Naruto blinked at what had just happened, before he shrugged it off and went towards the next man that hadn't seen what had just happened. This was a boy in his late teens that had similar features to the man that he had just knocked out cold. Oh, you the ninja that the mayor sent for? He asked when he finally noticed Naruto, who marched in front of the man. What animal has been attacking the fields? Naruto asked, and it took another moment for the man to realize that Naruto had asked him a question. Too bad for him that Naruto's patience stopped at one moment. As it was, Naruto slammed his forehead into this teen's forehead as well and knocked him out from the strong blow to the head. Naruto blinked when he realized he had knocked another person out, and he started to walk towards a woman that had seen the entire thing go down. Instead of running away though, she raised her hands in the air. I didn't see what it was, just that it was big. The woman said, before she got back to tending the fields. Naruto nodded to himself and started to look for the tracks of any large animals on the ground. He could see plenty of dog prints, but this was a farming town and he had seen many dogs on the way here, sheep herding breeds of them, so he would say any dog prints he found were supposed to be there. Naruto looked around towards the area closest to the forest, before he started to walk towards that area. The best place to hide a beast, was in a place with a lot of coverage. That and he would have seen it if it weren't in the forest. Thank you. Naruto called out behind him with a smile on his face. 
Naruto made it to the end of the field, before he closed his eyes and started to call out a sword to his hand. He was going into the woods where he was sure a feral animal would be, so he would need a weapon to defend himself with. In his hands was a spear, a spear taller than he was, with two blades at the top of it running against each other with a small amount of space between them. Instead of a sword, he had ended up deciding to summon a weapon that would give him more range. He lifted the spear over his shoulder, before he started to walk into the forest to find something. He didn't know what he was looking for either. He couldn't see any tracks nearby either, so he would look deeper into the forest. So with that in mind Naruto kept going farther and farther into the woods. He was sure that he was still in sight of Hinata's Byakugan, damn it, he should have totally taken her with him. Oh well, it wasn't like some animals were going to be any trouble for him to deal with. This was a C-rank mission that even Genin could do with only moderate trouble. Naruto could do it easily as well if he put his mind to it. Look out in front of you. Urza stated to Naruto, coming out of his body and surprising him just as he tripped and fell down and smacked into the ground. Kia. That was surprisingly cute of you. Urza said as she looked at Naruto laying face down on the ground. Naruto didn't say anything as he looked up with some dirt covering his face. Naruto was sweat dropping, because him going Kia out of surprise had not been a habit had had before now. Of course, his screams had always been a little higher pitches, but he was 12 so that wasn't really his fault for that. Naruto stood up and shook his head, before he looked at what he had tripped over, what he was still standing inside of. A large footprint, at least 5 feet long easily, and maybe two and a half feet wide. The indent in the ground was deep, almost six inches deep. Whatever had made this footprint had hit the ground with a lot of force, or weighed a lot. He would say both given how big the print was. Naruto gulped lightly, knowing that this was going to be harder than he thought it was. Naruto looked at the footprint closer, and at the front of it he could see five toes, so this was something with almost human feet feet that were five feet long. Shut up, just shut up. Naruto told Urza with a twitching eye. She seemed to smile for a moment, while Naruto looked at the footprint, that came out of nowhere. He could see a matching footprint close by, but other than that there were no more footprints around. Naruto looked around for anything that looked like those kinds of footprints. Naruto blinked when he saw another set of matching footprints farther away, he grinned and started to follow towards the feet marking in the ground. Now he had a clue to go on, and he was going to follow it and see what he was going to find at the end of these footprints. Those are some large feet. Urza commented neck to Naruto, who nodded as he jumped over the next set and started to look around for anything that he could find. Naruto looked at a path to his right, and in the distance he could see more prints. Naruto started to run towards those prints as he went deeper into the forest. While he ran, Urza made sure to look around Naruto so that nothing could take him by surprise. This was the only reason why she would let him foolishly go off on his own, because with her around nothing would be sneaking up on him. Yeah, maybe it belongs to an oni or something. That would be so cool if I brought back the horn of an oni as a prize. Naruto said with his tone filled with enthusiasm. Of course, Naruto was one of the few people that actually wanted to run into a demon during a mission. Demons were so rare these days that killing one was a big deal. Now most demons were summoned creatures or sealed away, so you would rarely come upon one that had free will or was unsealed. Hey, giant toads and other creatures existed, so saying something like an oni existed wasn't too hard to believe. You seem excited. Urza stated to herself, mostly. Hey you demon bastard. Why don't you show yourself? Naruto shouted out a taunt as he walked towards the next set of footprints. Urza face palmed at Naruto openly taunting demons to try and draw them out. The boy might be amazing in a fight, but when it came to thinking about when to pick a fight and when not to, he still had much to learn. One does not just pick a fight with an unknown opponent and expect things to go smoothly. She shook her head and she was about to warn Naruto that he was about to step into another footprint, before something dropped out of the sky and crashed into the ground behind Naruto. Naruto heard it, oh yeah, he heard the sound of something huge slamming into the ground behind him. 
Naruto turned around, before he looked up and saw something that was casting a large shadow over him. Neruot started to saw something that would scare the hell out of anything that was caught by surprise. The first thing he noticed was that this thing was standing at over 28 or so feet tall easily. Naruto heard the sound of something behind swung towards him, and he jumped up and landed on a nearby branch. The ground where he had been cratered from the blow. Naruto finally got the chance to see what had almost smashed him. Rocks, the entire thing was a giant golem-shaped pile of rocks. It was brown in color, and was generally human-shaped with larger arms and hands for more power. It had a larger lower jaw with square teeth, and a single round hole in its head for an eye. Naruto looked at its feet, and it had no toes, so this thing wasn't the thing that had made the tracks that he had followed here. Naruto started to spin his spear, before he pointed it at the golem creature and charged the magical staff and sent a bolt of lightning at the head of the creature. Lightning met earth, and earth crumbled into nothing as the lightning passed right through its head quickly. Naruto blinked and looked at the staff in confusion, because he had just equipped it so that he could shoot lightning up into the air and call for help if he needed. The entire creature was soon nothing but crumbled earth on the ground. Naruto jumped out of the tree and back onto the ground with a grin on his face. Urza was surprised by the strange turn of event as well. Naruto was going to have to ask why the lightning did that to the earth later, but until then Naruto looked around for any sign of the enemy. Do you hear that? Urza asked, and Naruto blinked when he listened and heard what she was hearing, it was the strange sound of a flute. Naruto heard four thumps hit the ground around him, and strangely enough Naruto's vision started to shift in his left eye. Naruto's body froze up when he saw, out of his left eye, that the world around him was replaced with the color red for the ground, and lighter red for the era and sky around him. Naruto could only hear the sound of the flute playing in the background, and his body seemed to be suddenly tied up by wire. This was only out of his left eye though, for some reason his right eye wasn't noticing the change in the area around him. To his right eye the world seemed to be normal, and he could see four ninja standing in front of him. He couldn't move his body or speak out, or even hear what was going on around him, but he could still see out of his right eye. Naruto could see three boys and a girl, all around 14 or 15 years old in age. The first person, or freak, that he saw was a boy with two heads standing at the front of the group. He had light blue hair, and the second head was sticking out of the back of his head. He wore black, tight, shorts that went to his knees, and over that he had a tan-colored tunic with a white in slash yang symbol on it in complete white. His shins were wrapped in bandages with blue sandals. His tunic was long sleeves, and he had black armbands. The final piece of clothing was a purple robe around his waist. The second person was a tall guy with a balding problem, and an orange mohawk on his head with two tufts of hair on each side above the ears. He was chubbier than the, he was the chubbiest person of the ground. Even his face had chub on it, and he wore the same uniform as the guy ahead of him, but with short sleeves instead. The guy had small eyes, and he couldn't tell where the guy was looking at the moment. The third guy was a tanned boy with a sound shinobi headband on his forehead, and dark hair spiked up in a ponytail in the back. He wore the same uniform as the others, but his sleeves were almost non-existent. He had a total of six arms, three coming out of each sleeve on his tunic. The guy wore the same purple robe with the bow in the back like the others did, and even the same footwear. The guy was grinning as he looked over at the unmoving Naruto, who could still see the fact that these people were talking to each other like Naruto wasn't even here at the moment. The final person was a red-haired girl, and he would have noticed her first because of that, but she was a bit farther away from the others. She had a flute to her lips, meaning that she was the cause of the reason that he couldn't move his body at the moment. Her hair was the longest in the ground, but it was shaggy as well in the back as it went down to her waist at the tips. She had long bangs, and even longer side burns that went past her shoulders. She had a single thick strange of hair in the middle of her face. Her eyes were sharp though, and he could see her brown eyes staring at him. She wore baggy clothes, with the only tight thing being the skin-tight shorts. Seriously, what was with that uniform? 
Even she was wearing that same tunic that went down to the knees, but with slits up the sides at each leg that went to the waist. She had that same purple robe with the bow tied behind her. She even wore the same shoes and shin bandages, and even the same black armbands on her forearms. The clothes were so baggy that Naruto couldn't tell if she was flat-chested or just smaller-chested. At least, she had on a weird black beanie with bandage tape around her forehead. The silver flute in her hands though was the source of the illusion, so Naruto focused on that flute. Okay, time to show that even though his body was helpless, he himself was not helpless. Naruto looked at the ninja in front of him, before there were four glows in front of Naruto, and in a second four swords appeared in front of Naruto, floating at his own command. The max that Naruto could make float in the air and control like this was five swords, so looking at the surprised ninja, he made the swords fly towards each of them. They all jumped out of the way, and the girl didn't even stop playing. He changed the direction of the swords, and the one with multiple arms started to spit out sticky white stuff, and people called his power wrong. At least Naruto never spat out stuff that looked like cum, because even though the swords had been captured, Naruto was sure that he would be laughing at the strange. Gross. Naruto thought when his body was covered in spider webs shot from the guy he had mentally insulted. Okay, right now Naruto really wished he was good at genjutsu, or at least good enough to dispel it. He couldn't even remember the trick to doing it right now. He was just glad that he could see normally out of his right eye, the eye he got from Urza. The fact he was aware he was in a genjutsu made the pain he was feeling inside of it a little less intense, it felt like his arms were melting off. That flute was still messing with him. Naruto couldn't use his chakra properly, but he could still use magic. Naruto summoned a sword in front of him and cut himself out of the webbing, much to the surprise of the people in front of him. The sword was floating in mid-air after all. The one with blue hair started to charge forward. Naruto felt an intense pain in the back of his head, and suddenly he felt the illusion loosen a little. Just enough for him to regain control of his body for long enough to dodge a blow from the blue-haired guy, and swing his sword with his hand in that second to cut off both heads of the guy. The guy's face as his heads were cut off was one of complete surprise. He had not expected Naruto to be able to move, and Naruto could thank Urza for hitting him in the back of the head to snap him out of the illusion, of course with that damn music playing he was back in the illusion again, just stuck in a different position this time around. Of course, that didn't matter much to him since he was in shock. He had taken a life, he had surprised the blue-haired one and killed him. Naruto had killed somebody out of reflex. He had swung his sword and taken the both heads off that person. The body was still bleeding on the ground in front of him, even worse was that the only one that seemed to care about a teammate getting killed was the large one. The red-haired one seemed pretty indifferent to the death, while the brown-haired one still had a grin on his face. Naruto felt a hit to the back of his head again. In that second, Naruto covered his ears with his fingers and jumped up back to the tree branches, surprising the ones in front of him again. Naruto really wished that he could hear their voices, but the red-haired one was still playing her flute, so he wouldn't be able to talk. The large one slowly charged at Naruto, who could see it coming a mile away. Naruto summoned a dagger into his mouth, before he pressed his feet against the branch and jumped down towards the one charging him. Naruto made one of the swords float, before he had it go flying towards the guy's back. Naruto was punched in the gut and sent flying with his dagger coming out of his mouth, and the gut section of his armor being broken apart. The sword hit its target though and pierced the man through the spine and coming out his chest. Even as Naruto smashed through a tree, he still had his ears covered. It would seem that the death of two comrades had made the other two remaining take Naruto far more seriously as black markings started to appear on their bodies. Swirling wind designs appeared on the multi-armed one, and lines forming like circuits appeared on the girls like veins. Naruto started to run away, knowing that he couldn't win this battle. They had seen him use his trick with the swords, and would know that he could make them fly from behind them. They had six usable marks, and four usable legs to fight with. Naruto was limited to his legs right now, and his legs were shorter, so fighting like this would be useless for him. When he got back to Konoha, he was learning about Genjutsu, 
because this was a big weakness of his if he was having this much trouble getting out of them. He could see Urza next to him, and then he felt something hit him in the back of the head. The girl had appeared behind him and kicked him in the head, a place without armor on it. Naruto stumbled, but refused to take his fingers out of his ears when he saw her still playing her flute. Naruto felt something prick him in the fairy tale mark on his arm, and looking at his arm he saw a needle sticking out of the symbol. Naruto suddenly felt very dizzy, not being able to hear attacks coming was a problem, and Naruto fell to his knees and let go of his ears when his arms went numb. I thought Lord Orochimaru had just sent us after more trash, but this boy was pretty good. He killed the bird-brained and fatso, even if by surprise. A slightly feminine and rough voice said as Neruat's vision grew more blurry. Naruto used his arms to keep himself from falling on his face, even though they were numb. He even cancelled the invasion. This brat must have some bloodline if Lord Orochimaru cancelled the destruction of Kanoha so that he could get his hands on it, though he didn't have a choice when the Uchiha boy never got to fight, and the Jinchuriki got defeated. The entire plan rode on those two factors. Lord Orochimaru has taken an interest in a bloodline that can defeat a Jinchuriki, and a new bloodline that hasn't been recorded. The male voice said, and Naruto started to force himself to a standing position as his eyes closed. He couldn't see them, but the girl wasn't playing with her flute so he could still fight back. He woodled stop fighting until he was knocked out. Which could happen at any moment. Stay awake Naruto. Urza demanded on him, but even her voice was fuzzy to him. He had some damn powerful sleeping drug inside of him right now. Despite popular belief, Naruto was not completely immune to poison. He could just push through it with willpower for a while. Eventually he would pass out though, the poison wouldn't kill him anyway, but he would be knocked the hell out for a good amount of time. You know Tayuya, with that brown eye and red hair, this boy could be a long lost sibling or something. He must be pretty ruthless to kill Sakan, Yukon, and Jirobo in cold blood like that. Just your type, now if he has a foul mouth the two of you would be a match made in hell. The male voice said, and at least Naruto learned the name of the female. Naruto sent his metal armor away towards the pocket Demesnian, so that if he was captured they wouldn't get his armor. He passed out two seconds later. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, comment down below and let me know. Also share this video with your friends. I have created a playlist of this what if where you guys can find all the parts. See you in the next video.